cemetery and close, please find a Pioneer Blah unit with remote and cables. We need a half page review for the October issue, so that gives you about two weeks to get us that copy for edit. Standard stuff like you gave us on the Blah. It's a combi player, so check its CD playback with a few discs as well as laser disc, and they want us to definitely hit the signal to noise ratio and toss like stuff for high end buyers. Looking forward to your take on it, enjoy the unit. Clearly these, clearly these people have taste. Yeah! Fuck yeah they do. Oh, she made a fucking fort! This looks like it's a reference to the book from Beetlejuice. Between a living and dead or whatever the fuck it was called. Some shit like that. The accidental savior. Oh. Terry, hey man, how have you been? I know you're a published author and everything now, but my editor at Hi-Fi Aficionado has too much review work to go around and he's looking for another freelancer. Naturally, I thought of you. You were saying in your cast letter how much of a pain it's been trying to find a publisher for your latest work of literature, and writing stereo reviews is dead simple. Sit at home with a glass of scotch, listen to some records, and write up how it sounds, and then get paid. I've included some issues of the mag to use as examples. If you're interested, send some samples to my editor and tell him your old college chum Mike sent you. Here's the address. Do it, Mike. The Heaven at the Edge of the World, Samantha Greenbrier, Grade 2. Captain Allegra looked off at the ocean. It went on forever, or so it seemed. Someday she would find the edge and get to the paradise there. Then she heard a cannon fire. Boom! It was the black pirate ship. She yelled, I thought we lost them at Horse Island! The first mate said, looks like you thought too soon. First mate should be on her side. The black ship came up along the side. Captain Black himself came out on the deck of the black ship. He yelled to Captain Allegra, You're never gonna find the edge. There ain't no paradise and your father were a liar. Captain... I mean, it sounded like an old drunk Irish man. Or drunk man, I don't know. I don't know. Captain Allegra yelled back, Then why do you keep following us, you imbecile? The first mate yelled out, We'll stop you... Stop you. We'll stop you, Captain Black. We'll find the edge of the world and you'll see her father was no liar. The battle kept going on until Captain Allegra's ship got away. Now west, she said, and the ship sailed towards the sunset. Fucking awesome story. Maybe I should make some coffee. I think I'll make some coffee. There's so many fucking rooms and fucking quietness in here. Jesus Christ, they have a full library! Holy hell. Alright, well, let's look in through here first. These are fat ass doors, too. Pacific Insurance Masters. Wiring in house is technically up to safety and amperage requirements. However, multiple layers of wiring have been added into the structure over the last hundred years. System is frequently unpredictable. Lights blink out for no clear reason. Pressure on floorboards and door frames disrupt circuits wired directly behind the surface. Properly reworking the electrical system would be highly destructive to the walls, floor, and fixtures of the structure. 
After discussion with Mr. Greenbrier, since there are no current safety concerns, issues will not be addressed. It's a really nice library. Yeah, it is. Yeah, buddy. something you can do better back to basics sent back in time to Dallas 1963 what if JFK wasn't JFK early space flight utopia advanced technology and World War II early time stream too different JFK president USS plus USR equals coalition Chinese, Japanese, Lebanese. Paradox results in JFK death being desired outcome. Record JFK off HBO. Magic bullet theory. Lone gunman. Grassy knoll steamrolled. Intercept LHO in USSR. LHO killed in Marines. Why not disrupt motorcade minutes before LHO can fire? Where's the kid over there? State of emergency in Dallas canals. Dallas something motorcade. So this guy was obsessed with this. John Russell opened his eyes and saw them. To stars. Twinkling as if he were lying on the grass in his family's yard in Massachusetts, even though that place was a million miles away. No, he blinked the sleep from his eyes looking through the carbon reinforced safety glass of the space station Archimedes. Yes, he was a long way from home, but the future needed him. John Russell's head swam. He felt incredibly drunk, despite not having touched a drop in hours. He vomited onto his feet, his bare feet. He started for a moment, processing his sick flicked toenails, scanning up his bare shins, bare knees. He was completely naked. He looked up and met the eyes of a gorgeous blonde woman wearing a tight poly fi polymer fiber tunic. The fabric that strained at the seams to contain her generous bosom was emblazoned with the phrase, Matter Transference Operator, then he passed out. John Russell had crossed the gap, the gap in time, only messages had passed before, but now, a man. They needed him, now more than ever. Changing the past was no longer good enough. The instructions from the council had been clear, what to procure, what to construct from it, how to assemble it, so he made the machine, how to transport him bodily across time. And now he stood, there on the bridge of the starship Archimedes. Did that move? That was creeping. That was creeping out of creeping me out. <sighs> Command of the vessel, because only he who had saved the president's life twice before could helm the naive crew to their destiny, the fate of the galaxy. So what I'm seeing is this started out as like an actual serious story, and there were no typos or anything. Then it turned into smut with a lot of typos, so he was drunk, but he didn't let his character be drunk so he could make himself feel better. And this is just all fucked up, no corrections, and he's totally projecting his feelings onto the character about how he's needed, especially by the prez. But I mean, still, it's just, you know, it's not great. They say that a jack of all trades is a master of none. I have to disagree. Mastery is not a question of specialization, but sureness of purpose and dedication to craft. If you happen to be in the market for a combination LC, LD CD player, 
You'll be glad to know that Pioneer seems to share this particular blah. So that's where he stopped his review. Getting in bed, not sure how long I'll stay up after I order the headphones and mic accessories. That's fine, Mr. B. The killing of JFK, a theory. The accidental patriarch, villain, ambassador, messiah, the occasional, sometime unreliable savior hero, a year on the mountain, come down from the mountain, the accidental prophet, the accidental prophet. Dear Terrence, David asked me to write you regarding the reviews you've been submitting the last few months. Frankly, they're becoming more trouble than they're worth from an editing standpoint. There's a word limit. It's your job to stay under it, not mine to cut back to it. Even then, it's becoming harder and harder to weed out the tangents and non sequiturs from the usable copy without heavy rewrites. The readers of Home Theater Aficionado want to hear about the quality and value of the hardware, not ruminations on your childhood. If it were up to me, I wouldn't be writing this letter. I'd just be cutting you loose. There's tons of guys half your age who would take half your rate to write stuff I could usually use. But David's known you for a long time, and he's the boss, so I'm giving you one more shot on this, his say-so. You should write him a nice thank you note, a nice note thanking him for his patience and generosity. Look through your old stuff and start submitting reviews like that again. Then everybody will be happy. Zero, four, five, one. United States Department of Agriculture, U.S. National Forestry Manual. Reproductive System Worksheet 6. The early morning of September 1st, 1939, Essa Glatz stares out the window of the train as it travels from Vienna back to her home village of Wailen in Poland. As the train rumbles along and the sun rises over the countryside, she can only think of her dear Borisov, the boy she is engaged to wed. Meanwhile, deep within her guts, an ovum starts to develop. Essa's train approaches its destination. Her heart races. The lining of the uterus is getting thick and soft. Very interesting fucking story. Holy shit, this is fucking hardcore. I guess I'll read it all. This is really intense. As Essa steps off the train, her eyes start quickly across the gathered crowd. Then, there, her dear Boris, still in his baker's smock, he must have dropped his early morning duties at his father's shop to come meet her. Her heart skips a beat. The ovary releases the ovum. It travels through the fallopian tube. Over the wheezing of the steam engines, a deep hum grows. It's coming from the sky. Dark shadows pass over the station. A whistling sound. Essa, her thoughts only a second faster than the bombs, reaches out toward her dear Boris across the crowd. Their eyes lock and the moment freezes. The flash and smoke envelops him almost instantly. In the assault by German forces, almost 75% of the people in her hometown are killed. 
The rest, including Asa and her, and for a time, Borisov, huddled in a half-destroyed church. He is blind, his legs are missing, bandaged with torn bedsheets. Asa's egg will not be meeting a sperm. It dissolves. About two weeks later, Boris loses his grip on life. Essa has given up her rations to keep Boris alive, but in the end, nothing can save him. Since the lining of the uterus is not needed for pregnancy, it comes out through the vagina. Essa vows to survive. She sets off to join the Polish resistance as a daring spy and saboteur. Another ovum starts to develop in one of the ovaries and process begins again. It is incredible how the female body knows how to prepare for pregnancy. And then all it's written is, see me. <laughs> Fuck, I love Sam, she's hilarious. Dear Mr. Greenbrier, I write to inform you that, unfortunately, Mercury Books will be able to publish a follow-up to The Accidental Pariah. Despite the low sales of The Accidental Savior, we went ahead with publication of the second book in hopes of John Russell's series catching on. However, sales of the second book have in fact been lower than those of the first, and so our stewardship of the series must end here. It has been a pleasure working as a publisher, and we wish you and John Russell the best in your future endeavors. Sincerely, Donald Fripps. I left my trunk in town. I hear you. I dug my heart a grave for you. Your kisses keep on haunting me. Samantha, please give this to your mother. Janice, thank you for having Danny over to your new home. He has missed having his friend Samantha in the neighborhood very much. Danny asked if he could send lend Samantha his Nintendo Street Fighter fighting tape, and I gave him my permission. He needs to spend less time with those games anyway. No hurry returning it. Let Samantha know that she is welcome back to our house to visit anytime. Sincerely, Mary Shoots. When you live in one place your whole life, your next door neighbor is kind of like your default friend. And Daniel only got weirder over the years. So moving away has been a good excuse to, like, not see him anymore. But he did always have the good Nintendo games. Maybe I'll give him a call. <laughs> 